Hi friends, welcome back to Faith and Arrow Homestead. My name is Jaylee and I have got probably the best recipe this channel has ever produced. It is normally a sausage and potato soup. There's a little bit of a twist on just that normal recipe and then I'm taking it even a step further and I'm going to show you how you can use your Easter leftovers to make this soup. The very first time I made this, Tom and I were blown away by how good it was. And the secret ingredient in this soup is smoked sweet paprika. Now, can you use regular paprika? Absolutely you can. And it took me the longest time to bite the bullet and get smoked sweet paprika. Actually, my mommy bought this for me. Um, and I couldn't justify it, right? I had regular paprika good enough. No, you guys, please invest in the smoked sweet paprika. It is I, there's no words. It's so good. This soup is so very good. Normally, it's a so it's a sausage potato soup. And normally, I use this um, apple flavored chicken sausage that I get from Aldi's. This is typically what I make the soup with. It doesn't have any um, seed oils, but it also even with that, it's still not the best. Um, but this is one of those concessions that I make because I love this chicken sausage and so this is normally what I put in the soup you could do an Italian sausage you could do even a breakfast sausage you could do any sausage that you have um, but to make the swap for this to be an Easter leftover soup we're going to use ham so I've got leftover um, spiral ham here that I already went ahead and cubed up and then I've got an onion that I chopped and one clove of garlic you could do two cloves if you if you like to go heavy on the garlic um, that I minced and then the other swap that we're going to make in this soup, normally I would take regular potatoes and I would peel them and I would um, dice them or I guess maybe chopped is the better word. I, I leave the pieces like decently big um, and cook them in the soup. But to make the swap so that we can use our Easter leftovers, we're going to put mashed potatoes in this soup. Now I did make it this way. Um, already I've tried this previously having the mashed potatoes instead of the diced potatoes and it is amazing because the consistency that it gives this soup is just out of this world so we're gonna use leftover Easter ham and leftover mashed potatoes to make this sausage and potato soup which I guess now it's a ham and potato soup but in the recipe that I'm gonna have linked in the description I will have it both ways I'll give you both options um, so that if it's not a holiday and you don't have leftover ham, you can make it the normal way with the sausage and potatoes. But this soup, so very good. So over on the stove, I'm not going to bring you because it's nothing you haven't seen before. I'm going to add a pat of butter, roughly a tablespoon of butter, get that melted, and then I'm going to throw in my onions. And I will cook those, uh, saute them for a second, and then I'll add in my garlic. At that point, normally I would add in a little bit of flour to make a roux, but we're actually not gonna do that this time because the addition of the mashed potatoes thickens it up nicely and you don't need to add any additional thickener. And technically, you don't need to add flour in this recipe at all because even if you were doing it the original way with the diced potatoes, the diced potatoes absorb quite a bit of the liquid of the soup when you are cooking it. At the, in the last half of the recipe. So there is no flour in this recipe, no roux, no thickening needed because the potatoes do the thickening for you. All right guys, really this recipe is so easy. So I have my onion and garlic all nice and sauteed. I added um, probably half a teaspoon of salt. Now I've got some um, home canned beef broth and I'm gonna pour a little bit of that in and just deglaze the bottom of this pan. And then because we're not making a roux, you don't really have to add it slowly. I just like to do that first deglaze. And once I see the bottom of the pan is nice and clean, we can add in the whole thing. And you're actually going to want to add in two pint jars uh, for a total of 32 ounces of broth. I'm using beef broth. You can absolutely use chicken broth, pork broth, vegetable broth, whatever broth you have. Um, it doesn't really matter because the paprika is going to be the star of this show in terms of um, flavor. So I wasn't thinking, I probably would have added the paprika while it was just the onions and the garlic so that I could let that saute for just a second and um, let it just really meld in flavors. I probably would have done that before I added my broth. It's not a huge deal, but I recommend um, adding it before you add in your broth. So we are going to add two 
heaping teaspoons. And guys, this is this is my new favorite flavor right now. <laughs> I absolutely just love it so very much. It is so good. I already added some salt, so now I'm gonna add some pepper. So for this ratio, the amount that I have in this soup, I would recommend one cup of mashed potatoes if you're doing this as the leftover soup. Um, if you are doing the diced potatoes, I would probably recommend two large diced potatoes, four small, I've got the really small potatoes, the organic ones, um, diced up uh, for this ratio because you don't wanna add too much, it'll make it too thick and be more like a stew, I guess, sort of, for a lack of a better word. It won't be as soupy. So I'm going to do a cup and I'm just going to start kind of breaking this up and getting this in here. And you can use your whisk to like really get it very well combined so there are no clumps. I don't ever put that much effort in because the original soup has chunky diced pota uh, potato. So if there's a few chunks of mashed potato, I don't see the difference. So I don't spend a whole lot of time really whisking it in super well, but you can see already how this has changed the, the texture and the consistency of our soup. Very exciting. So the next thing, I'm going to add a splash of whole raw cow's milk. Um, if you are using store-bought ingredients, I would recommend using heavy cream. Um, would give you the best, the best benefit there, but I'm just gonna use my whole milk. And I just put in a splash, just to give us a little bit of creaminess there. And then the very last ingredient is our ham. Gonna go ahead and get that in here. And then I'm gonna turn our heat back up here. I've got it on low right now. I'm gonna turn it back up to medium. I'm gonna let this bubble simmer away for a little bit, just so that our potatoes can help soak up some of this liquid and can thicken this up for us a little bit. It will, it'll thicken a little bit because right now it's looking a little thin. Um, the potatoes will really absorb some of this liquid and really um, thicken this up for us a little bit. May I bring you guys a nice little kitchen hack. If you are making a soup, and it is too thin. You wanna thicken it up a little bit, but you don't wanna to have to add like a cornstarch slurry. You don't wanna to have to add in any more flour. You're like, man, I really wish that the soup was a little thicker. May I offer you a really fun solution, especially if you have kids, this is a fun one. So I made Italian wedding soup for the first time a few weeks ago, and I purchased this, Assini de, de Pepe? Probably didn't say that right, but these are the little circular pastas they're just like little balls and this is the pasta that goes in italian wedding soup now when i made the italian wedding soup i didn't know how much of this i needed and i made way too much <laughs> i had these little balls for days and so i made the um, sausage potato soup a few days later and i had the extra pasta in the fridge and so i said oh i'm gonna throw that in there just because i have it and it needs to get used so why not and it did a lovely job of absorbing a little bit of that extra liquid and thickened it up really nicely. And as I've got this, I could let this simmer long enough to get it to the consistency that I want. Just like when you're making um, sauce and you're, you're canning sauce and you're making your sauce, you let it simmer long enough, you're gonna end up with the consistency that you're looking for. But if you're trying to get dinner on the table and you've got hungry bellies to feed and you're trying to thicken it up quickly, throw in, especially if you have this uncooked, throw a little of this into your simmering soup pot and it will absorb some of that liquid and give you a thicker soup and it'll make it heartier because now you've got pasta in there. Now you can do this with any pasta noodle. You can do it with an elbow noodle, cavatappi noodle, whatever noodle you have on hand, a ziti noodle. Um, but I just think these are so fun to have on hand. And this little box, because this is a tiny little box, there's a lot of pasta in here. Trust me when I say that there's enough pasta in here to make like 10 Italian wedding soup uh, batches. So I just wanted to give you that little tip. Um, I'm probably not gonna do it today. You know what? No, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna put a little bit of this in my simmering batch. Because why not? Um, and I, this doesn't go along with the theme of uh, leftover, the Easter leftovers, but I just wanted to give you that little tip because I was thinking about it when I, after I did it the first time and I was like, what a great idea for getting the soup to the consistency you want faster without having to add in things like cornstarch or more flour. I am so addicted to this soup. It smells so good. I guess it's not necessarily anything to look at, but man, 
it smells just amazing and you've got that pasta in there and you've got the ham the onion the garlic oh you guys it is just fantastic now to further this whole idea that we're using our Easter leftovers if you've got any leftover dinner rolls that you could dip in this wow does that sound amazing but in the meantime a slice of sourdough bread is gonna have to do the trick and this is piping hot let's try it that is so good with the ham I've made the soup with the mashed potatoes before, so I already knew that was good, but I had never made it with ham. I've only ever made it with that sausage that I was showing you, um, but the ham flavor fits right in with that smoked sweet paprika. Oh, it's so, so good, you guys. So even if you don't make this recipe with your Easter leftovers, if you've got other plans, because I know there's so many recipes out there for using your holiday leftovers, that's fine. I still highly recommend you give this soup a try because it is just oh it's so good and if you only have regular paprika if it's in the budget please do yourself a favor and get the smoked sweet paprika it is just man those flavors are just out of this world it's so good and it's so exciting for me I would say that's probably my favorite part of this cooking from scratch journey that I've been on. Since I cut out seed oils from my diet, I've, I cook the majority of my food from scratch and that has been a journey over this last little over a year now. And I would say that the biggest thing, cause I've always liked to cook and I've always cooked at home, but it, I couldn't call it scratch cooking necessarily because it was still using a lot of like boxed and canned ingredients from the grocery store, which is okay if that's what you can do. but. Um, now that I'm kind of into this cooking journey a little bit more, I've started to use a lot of herbs and spices. I'm growing some of them myself and I'm really starting to understand and get an appreciation for those flavors. And it just takes not only cooking, but eating to a whole nother level. Because you guys, the fact we serve such a generous God who gives us the opportunity to enjoy and experience our food. And that is such a gift. And so discovering things like the flavor of smoked sweet paprika and getting to find recipes to use that in and being able to experience it, the smell and the taste, it's just amazing and it's such a gift. So if you um, kind of are more on the plain side, if, if a recipe calls for time and you usually leave it out, I really encourage you grow a lot of those yourself to save money from the grocery store. And I would highly recommend starting to use those in the kitchen because it's really just going to elevate the whole experience for you. So I really, really hope that you'll give this recipe a try because it is so good. Probably the best recipe to come out of this channel. I really hope you'll give it a shot and I can't wait to see you guys in my next video. By the way, I hope you had an amazing Easter. Praise Jesus that he died for us and rose again, um, conquered sin and grave for us. So um, I can't wait to see you in my next video. Have faith, my friends, and keep moving forward. Bye.